Let's go to Stuart in California. Welcome to the line of fire. Hey, Dr. Brown. Hey. Hey, um, I have a question for you about the Passion Translation. Um, yeah. It's a translation that's, that's really taken off in the charismatic circle that I'm a part of. Um, but before I ask you that, I, I just want to let you know just what a big difference you've made in my life, just a big impact. Um, basically, before I listened to your sermons uh, on YouTube, I was studying to be an actor, a musician, and then after I listened to your sermons, I, I just wanted to be a missionary. So, I mean, just I just want to thank you so much for your service to the body. Um, I just remember when I was in college, uh, like I said, I was studying to be an actor, and somehow I found a YouTube video of yours talking about the Messianic prophecies or something like that um, at UCLA. Mm. And then um, through that— Yeah, USC. I, I found USC you. that was. Yes, oh, sir. You, yep, yep, USC. And, I mean, that just stunned me. I'm like, man, this is a, this is a solid preacher. And, and then I found a message through that— um, of you preaching at the Brownsville Revival, like the the message fire. Yes. And I just remember listening to that, like, I just fell to my knees and just began weeping um, during that altar call part. And up to that point, I mean, I listened to a lot of sermons, but, like, no sermon ever made me, like, weep and come under conviction like that. But basically through that sermon, my eyes was just open. Like, I saw that I wasn't living for God, and I wasn't truly following God and being a disciple. And ever since listening to that message, I, I rededicate my life and just decided to follow Jesus and give my life for missions. And I just want to thank you so much for your service once again, because I know that if I had not listened to that to that sermon and also got your books, well, uh, the one on Holy Revolution, I would, I would have fallen away from the Lord. I, I know that for a fact, because messages of repentance, I mean, I just didn't really hear that where I was. So, um, so, so thank you so much for that. Well, that uh, Stuart, uh, th- thank you for, for sharing that. That's moving to hear, and I, I pray that the Lord would, would move deeply in your life in the years ahead and, and use you to the full. In fact, I was going to ask uh, for you to stay on and uh, during the break, just encourage you to, to shoot your testimony to us through the website, and I was going to send you the Revolution book as a gift. But stay there. We've got a break. I want to get to your question about the Passion Translation. But thanks for sharing that. Tell you what, sh- uh, if, if you ever do email us and put your testimony in writing, uh, send it to the website. I'll come up with a book maybe that you don't have and send it to you as a gift. Thank you. All right, back to Stuart in California. So you were asking me about the Passion Translation. Yeah, um, I just wanted to get your opinion on it. And I don't know if maybe you've ever thought of writing an article on that, because, I mean, the Passion Translation, it is like the thing right now that like charismatic leaders are re- are reading and like recommending and from what I've researched uh like uh the website got questions I mean just verse after verse is like is like not not the literal translation there's like like a lot of additions and I also read something that said an entire paragraph was added to scripture and and how you know Brian Simmons he seems like a good guy but it's only one person there's no committee of translators and people are saying it's not really a translation, it's an interpretation. Yeah. But then, you know, leaders like Bill Johnson are, are using it and actually preaching from it, as well as many others. Um, and I respect Bill Johnson, you know, like, I, I'm yeah. a charismatic, I speak in tongues, I pray for healing, all that. But it's like, if, if we can be so shaky on our foundation of Scripture, like, if it's not really a translation, you get what I mean? It's like, should, yeah, yeah. should we so, be, yeah, so, should we be yeah, preaching let me... from it? Yeah, let me let me uh, let me weigh in and, and and thank you, thanks Stuart for framing the question clearly. I, I've known Brian Simmons for a good number of years. Uh, he and his wife were uh, Bible translators in like jungles of the Amazon, somewhere like that. When the Lord called them back to the states, he he pastored a thriving church in Connecticut, and then felt called out of that in the midst of successful ministry to devote himself fully to Bible translation. So he reveres the Word. He's a, he's a great lover of the Word. He's a God-fearing man who really reveres and loves the Word and has devoted more of his life to Bible translation than most human beings you'll ever, ever meet. So that's one thing. Second thing is, uh, passion translation, that's a good name for it. It is passionate. It is vibrant. It is powerful. It is beautiful. But it is not really a translation. It is more a paraphrase than a translation, in my opinion. 
Now, it's not a paraphrase on the level that the message is. The message is, is a more radical paraphrase. Uh, Brian Simmons' uh, rendering is closer to the original, but I would not use it as my primary Bible because it is not close enough to the literal sense in that regard. Now, no translation is word for word because you cannot go directly from one foreign language to another word for word and have it make perfect sense. The sentence structure is going to be different. The the emphasis is going to be different. The grammar is going to be different. But you can get closer to that. So, for example, the NASB shoots to get closer to that type of translation. And the NIV would be a little bit more free to try to get things in a more smooth flowing English. So translations are more literal versus more dynamic. And then you have a paraphrase like the NLT, the New Living Translation. That's a mild paraphrase. Living Bible, a little bit more extreme paraphrase. The message, a really extreme paraphrase. The Passion Translation fits in with those paraphrases. And that's why I say don't use it as your primary Bible. Use it in a secondary way. Brian also relies on the Aramaic Peshitta more than I would, but he does so in a mature way and, and wrestles, you know, would wrestle for long periods of time to really try to get the nuance of a verse here or there correct. And it, it's not unprecedented to have one person do a translation or a paraphrase, uh, whether it was J.B. Phillips, whether it was Moffat, whether it was, it was Eugene Peterson, for better or for worse. And, and those will reflect the idiosyncrasies, the gifts, the strengths of the individuals involved. But that being said, if a Bill Johnson is preaching from it, my take would be that he's thoroughly familiar with the scriptures, that he's been through these texts many times, and he likes the way this reads. If he replaced his Bible reading and just read that over time, I would say that that he would get more used to the way Brian has rendered things with its particular nuances. So I would highly recommend the Passion Translation as a secondary version. So you're reading through the Bible, you want to look at another translation, or you want to read, let's just read through this in the Passion Translation to see how it flows, and then let me go back and compare it with the translations I normally use. And if I'm preaching, I have no problem pulling a passage out of the New Living Translation. I've pulled a passage out of the message as much as I have problems with with other parts of it. But I... I had promised that I would get back to talking about other translations once I did the KJV, and I'm planning on getting into paraphrases one of these weeks. So hopefully I will cover the Passion Translation at that time as well. 